recording will be made available to all attendees roughly 24 to 48 hours following the conclusion of the web session. Would also encourage everyone to uh, check us out on social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Absolutely great places to stay up to date with all the latest uh, news, announcements, product releases, promotions, and more coming from Unitrends. And lastly, as the uh, registration page did mention, this is one of our $500 tech demo uh, webinars. So all attendees today have been entered into a raffle. We have five $100 Amazon e-card prizes that will be raffled out to uh, a number of our lucky attendees at the conclusion of today's presentation. So keep an eye on your inbox for uh, notification to our winners. Uh, with that housekeeping out of the way here, we'd like to turn things over to Dick Stapler, again, our Senior Product Marketing Manager. Dick, are you with us? Looking forward to uh, talking to everybody. Um, so uh, first, I understand that uh, many of you uh, may not know who Unitrends is. So I'd just like to take one slide of your time uh, just basically to introduce who we are. Um, we are the leader in uh, all-in-one backup, uh, enterprise backup and data recovery. Uh, we have about 30,000 uh, active customers globally. Um, and we, have, we currently protect about two exabytes of customer data. We have our own cloud, um, and in that cloud right now, we have about 100 petabytes of uh, data that we, we protect. Um, and we're very, very proud of our customer satisfaction rating, um, the Stevie Awards. We win them every year. Uh, here are the two uh, wins that we got for 2019 on the bottom of your screen. And, um, but we uh, invented many of the uh, things about backup. We are the first all-in-one appliance. Uh, we invented bare metal recovery, uh, and uh, we are one of the only ones that have a dedicated cloud. So uh, just a few uh, points about who we are. So uh, now that we're formally introduced, we can get into the presentation. So um, uh, prior to joining Unitrends, I was an industry analyst with the Aberdeen Group, and I did extensive research on uh, all things IT, but specifically focused on uh, downtime disaster recovery. Um, and so I did some research and found out uh, and, and asked uh, respondents as to why um, they had downtime. And this is uh, the results uh, on your screen here. Um, normally what you hear from disaster recovery companies is they talk about uh, those uh, external type disasters, uh, floods, fire, locust plagues, smallpox outbreaks, uh, things like that, um, that are completely outside of your control. Um, but when you look at the numbers of, uh, of, of those causes, they're very uh, insignificant as far as uh, the causes of downtime within, your, within enterprises. The number, uh, the number one is human error. Yeah, people do stupid things. People get sloppy, people get lazy, and, um, and they take shortcuts, and that causes downtime. But number two, and not far behind, are software issues. And so really what we're going to be talking about today is mostly about software issues but also some human errors um, that uh, if you don't follow uh, correct procedures, if you take shortcuts, um, you can be the cause of your own downtime. So between those two, you're talking about half the causes of downtime. And, uh, and this is not an esoteric conversation. Uh, every, every year we do a survey of uh, uh, our, not only our customers, but the general uh, IT admins that are out there. And, uh, and literally in uh, 2018, uh, we did the survey in uh, June of this year, 42% of organizations experienced some form of downtime over the course of the year. So literally almost half. Um, and that means that uh, hopefully there was a recovery uh, from that downtime. We did not ask whether that recovery was smooth and successful every time. Um, but we're betting um, that a significant number of them were not. Uh, and the failed recoveries then extended that period of downtime uh, unnecessarily. And then also we found that uh, the amount of data loss remains unacceptably high. So consistently, year after year, about a third of organizations lose data, uh, mostly from a downtime event, uh, so that their applications are offline, the uh, data that's in the memory is all gone, um, and uh, any that weren't backed up in files, uh, if they had a, a server crash, 
uh, that data is lost forever. And so obviously a failed recovery extends and in, uh, increases the amount of data that's lost. So this whole conversation is real, and uh, there are failed recoveries that happen all the time. Uh, so at this point, I want to take a poll just to get a better understanding of uh, who I'm talking to here. Um, and I'm just going to ask you, um, have you had uh, a recovery failure in the last 12 months? And any one of the, uh, of the four, uh, five answers there, if you would choose uh, and just tell me uh, what your personal experiences have been so that uh, we can uh, get a sense here. Um, we'll leave this up for a little bit of time so that everybody uh, uh, gets a chance to see um, where we are. Um, and uh, I'm going to vote here for myself. Um, so, uh, uh, Adam, I'm not seeing the results of the survey. Um, could you uh, chime in and let us know when uh, when we see some some responses? Ab absolutely. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the poll open for another 15 seconds or so. Uh, Dick, when we close out the polling, that will flash. Uh, for our attendees, the results will be anonymous. We're looking at some general or larger trends here, not looking to put anyone on the spot. So uh, right. we'll have those in just a moment. I'm going to close it out now. Dick, you should be seeing uh, the results come in. A little uh, more I than am, half the folks. Yeah, I am not, but that's, that's fine. Um, I will tell you that I appreciate you being honest uh, in your responses. It's very difficult to do uh, survey uh, research about things that embarrass corporations. Um, you know, as, a, as an analyst, I was asking uh, organizations, you know, have you had uh, malicious employees um, who out, are walking out the door, delete their entire account, and so forth. And, and very few companies ever want to really admit that their hiring practices or their personnel policies uh, enabled uh, an employee to, uh, you know, to be destructive as they walked out the door. Um, I've also not been able to really do uh, research around uh, e-discovery, asking companies, you know, when was the last time you got sued? You know, no one's really able to tell, talk about that. So, Adam, do you have the results? Uh, can you share just a little bit um, as to what the results were? I do, absolutely. And we had and we had a little bit of a mix here. About about a quarter of our respondents uh, told us that they had no failures last year, no outages, no failures from which they had to recover. Uh, roughly <clears throat> about 20%, a little bit little bit fewer, about 20% only had successful recoveries. Uh, but about the 18% here had one or more recovery failures. So the majority of our respondents had either no failures or successful recoveries. But of our respondents, about 20% of our respondents had uh, one or more recovery failures within the last year. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being honest about that. So uh, for those of you who had no failures from which you could recover, uh, kudos to you. Uh, you're, doing, you're doing well. And those that had uh, a successful recoveries only, uh, nicely done. So uh, let's proceed. Okay, so um, the top reasons why recoveries fail. And um, these are a uh, multitude. These, uh, actually, we, I interviewed our uh, sales engineers uh, as to uh, why. Uh, also to the prospects who are calling in uh, asking about Unitrend's capabilities because they had a failed recovery and we asked about why. So um, the first and actually one of the most uh, prevalent is that uh, very large applications such as SQL, Exchange, large databases like Oracle, uh, CRM applications, um, they actually are multi-tier uh, applications, which means that portions of the application run on different physical servers. So you might have one that's doing uh, data management, one that houses the data itself, uh, and possibly a third that, that manages the entire user interface uh, and the data presentation uh, capabilities. Uh, I, you need to actually restore these applications in the correct boot order. Um, and uh, this is well known in the industry. You can find out very uh, easily uh, what that boot order is. But um, if your recovery uh, doesn't boot the application in the correct boot order, uh, the different servers, one after the other, um, then the application uh, may not be functional. So you need to actually, let's say, boot up the data storage element first and let it come to full uh, capability before you then boot the data access and then the user uh, presentation. 
So if you have not documented the boot order of these very large applications and represented that in your recovery plans, then your recovery will fail. Um, a similar uh, item, this is uh, Microsoft Active Directory. Uh, there are many applications that are uh, that are responsible that use uh, data from Active Directory, and if in a recovery process uh, you boot those applications up before Active Directory is active, um, then the application will not be able to go in and uh, after Active Directory has been booted. So uh, Active Directory needs to be uh, very early in your boot order, and you need to work that out with your recovery process. Um, so that gets uh, recovered before uh, the using the dependent applications. Um, and this uh, compatible backup and disaster recovery interfaces, um, there are actually uh, several uh, boot processes um, that are used by different types of servers. Um, some of them are BIOS, some of them are UEFI, uh, uh, Extensible Firmware Interface. Um, and if you have created your backups on uh, using one uh, type of uh, server, and then you try to restore that application on another server that uses a different boot process, you may fail. So you need to have a uh, recovery uh, process and a recovery software that can recognize the differences between these two boot processes and deal with them accordingly. So um, this is an area that um, uh, you know, advanced software data protection uh, can cover. So just ask about this capability uh, when looking at your recovery process. Also, how you configure your disks uh, also will make a difference. So snapshots, uh, for those of you who use um, you know, uh, SANS and all, snapshots have to be stored on native drives. Um, they can't be on remote drives or re a remote device. Um, so if you configure your, uh, in VMware, if you configure your disks as independent, um, then neither disk can be snapshotted and the backups will be empty. So they have to be um, uh, native uh, to the VM. Um, so this will cause a series of boot orders as well. What will end up being is your backups are not available then um, in order to restore the VMs and the applications. Um, this is another issue that can come uh, from having multiple uh, backup solutions. Um, so every large uh, database uh, application uh, comes with a, uh, an application uh, that's called Volume Snapshot Service, um, and this is a Windows product. And uh, basically, VSS captures and creates the snapshots while the application uh, is running so you don't have to quiesce the application. So, um, but there are many, many different versions of VSS that are out there in the marketplace. Um, if you do a simple search on Google uh, of a via VSS uh, different versions, um, I found a list of over 30 of them and it's not even a complete list. And so generally VSS uh, apps are included with the different applications as you download them. So Active Directory has one, SQL has one, Exchange Server has one, and the average Windows server literally will have 10 to 15 different VSS writers uh, installed on the server. And generally your backup system will use one um, for uh, the backing up, uh, the snapshotting and the backing up of all your applications. Now if you have different um, backup and recovery solutions that are running and, and create backups using different VSS versions, um, that will cause conflicts, uh, corruption, and the backups will not be able to be recovered by the other backup solution. So, um, and trying to fix this manually um, is a nightmare. I've heard this from multiple people, uh, trying to discover which VSS agent is running and so forth. So you really need a tool that in advance can discover when there are VSS uh, corruption issues and fix them automatically as part of the process. So uh, that should be part, uh, again, this is not something you want to have to diagnose after a failed recovery. Uh, recoveries uh, are happening in times of high stress. Uh, users are usually uh, down waiting for their applications to come up. This is not the time to try to do forensics and figure out why your backups failed. So really, 
there are some very critical things that you need to do in order to make sure your recoveries um, recover, and that includes testing, automated testing, which we'll get into a little later on. And finally, uh, one of the, uh, of the reasons uh, recoveries fail uh, is in particularly in SaaS applications. And by SaaS applications, what I mean are cloud-based applications such as Office 365, Google Suite, uh, Salesforce, um, that um, the uh, cloud providers have what's called a shared responsibility model. Um, so Microsoft, for example, um, they guarantee and protect data against hardware and operating system and application type uh, errors. But what they do not do, and if you read the, the fine print of their service, they will tell you right out that they do not uh, take care of customer level issues, such as if uh, somebody deletes an email, puts it in their uh, waste basket, and then that waste basket is emptied, uh, that data is gone forever. There's uh, no ability uh, to recover it. Um, if uh, your employee uh, walking out the door, again, that malicious employee, uh, deletes all of his files, puts it in the waste basket, and then empties the waste basket, um, that could make that data unrecoverable as well. So uh, most of the data that's lost in these, uh, these SaaS apps is from user data, is from user error. And, um, and that data now, there's more and more corporate, uh, critically, uh, critically important corporate information being developed uh, in Word and in the uh, uh, end user documents. So those actually need to be protected by a third party or an enhanced SaaS data protection solution. So we've outlined um, many of the problems that can come from uh, software compatibility issues and, re and cause recoveries to fail, but let's dwell a little bit here on the solutions. The first is um, that you should have only one data backup and recovery solution. Uh, you may have inherited one, you know, your company bought another company and they tried to merge the IT systems and therefore you inherited two different uh, backup and recovery solutions. Uh, you may, they may be, have been two before you got hired, uh, one old one and then one new one for some new applications. Um, that really is a, um, a recipe for uh, problems. Uh, probably there will be gaps. Um, it's very hard to get a seamless integration between two backup and recovery solutions. Um, but more likely there are overlaps. And those overlaps will introduce backup compatibility issues. Um, not to mention that managing two backup and recovery solutions, now you have multiple times the, the overhead, uh, the, uh, the scheduling, the backup, the testing, um, and all that comes with it. So really, you should select uh, one backup and recovery solution for your entire architecture. Uh, hopefully, you back up one, uh, select one that has also their dedicated cloud. It means one. Uh, support organization that you call whenever you have a problem. You don't have to try to diagnose where the issue is. Um, that organization is the one that can figure that out and help you. And so literally one, that's the magic number here. Um, secondly, um, there are SaaS backup solutions uh, that are out there in the marketplace. And uh, so Unitrends uh, offers Spanning, a uh, sister company of ours. Uh, and what we do is every single day, we take a full backup of all of the content in everybody's uh, SaaS account. And that includes not the, the app, but also um, you know, uh, SharePoint, uh, OneDrive, uh, and all of the, uh, the applications that go along with it. And then those backups, each individual day's backups are stored in the cloud, in a different part of the cloud, so it's not affected by downtime, forever as long as the account is active. Um, and that then uh, users can self-restore uh, going back to um, uh, those archives that are in their account. And you can see here in the image, I've included an image of the uh, phone version, so literally on their phone. So if they have, say, a PowerPoint presentation that they did last October, um, and they had deleted that email that contained the PowerPoint, and they need it, um, they can literally go back to a date um, that they know that that PowerPoint uh, existed, uh, they can find that individual file and restore it 
either to their original account or to a different account um, if that's where it uh, should go. So that's what's meant by granular recovery. Um, the admins also have this capability, so you can have an admin who is in charge of this um, to keep uh, people from sending data to different accounts. Um, but there is no extra charge for storage. It's all just part of the standard cost of SAS backup. And finally, and this is really uh, the golden rule uh, for um, keep preventing recoveries from failure, is frequent and automated testing. Um, the, it's, uh, recoveries are like uh, nu nuclear bombs. You only really know they work by setting them off. Um, so if you don't test, uh, and you, uh, then you don't know. Um, so you should uh, be able to back up and recover on the device or in the cloud um, a full application recovery. And by that I mean uh, you know, not just a screenshot or a snapshot of the, of the splash screen, but that the application is completely restored with the data and that you should be able to do automated testing on those restored applications. So um, in our uh, recovery appliance, for example, there's over 50 tests that are there. If it's a SQL database, you can actually have it go in, enter a data, a data element in, one, uh, in SQL, and then take it out and, uh, and know for sure that that uh, application is fully performing. And then get a report that shows you the actual recovery time and the recovery point uh, that that uh, test did take. And then it's all broken down, and, uh, and you can go on. You can schedule that for daily, weekly, uh, ad hoc, uh, uh, when needed. So if you'd like to know more about how uh, automated recovery testing works, I've included a URL there. It's, uh, it's an application called, uh, or it's a white paper that I wrote called uh, Disaster Recovery Testing and How to Win. Um, just put test, go to the resources section, put testing, and it'll pop right uh, to the top. Um, and what we do know is that uh, a majority of corporations, and that means probably a majority of the people who are sitting on this phone call, um, do test their recovery capabilities once a year or not at all. Um, and this is um, very, uh, this is really hard to understand. Um, there is nothing better uh, to test your recoveries than to test them on, a, on the appliance or in the cloud. Um, it doesn't affect the production environment. It doesn't cost extra money. Um, if it's automated, it happens automatically. It doesn't take more of your time. Uh, it can run in the background, and then all you get is a report at the end that, uh, you know, red, yellow, and green lights that show you um, where it was successful. And if it was unsuccessful, it'll actually give you reasons why that recovery failed. So at this point in the, in the webcast, what I'm going to do is turn this back over to uh, Adam, uh, and he is going to um, uh, give uh, a, a demonstration of, uh, of, the, uh, of our recovery capabilities. And, uh, and so, Adam, I pass the ball to you and take it away. Absolutely, Dick. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, and absolutely great, great information um, and some great things to be to be thinking through, especially the, the UEFI and, and BIOS, um, UEFI becoming the standard around uh, 2007 and starting to be implemented around the same time of Windows Vista, Windows 7, I think especially for folks with, with aging uh, recovery infrastructure where you're potentially maintaining a secondary site, um, critically important to check and see, you know, what underlying firmware. <clears throat> those machines will be booting from should you need them in a recovery scenario. Uh, but what folks, I digress, what folks are looking at here now is the configured dashboard for a Unitrends appliance. It's an HTML-based dashboard tile system here. You can drag and drop and customize the view to the uh, data points or data elements that are most important to you. You have our system-wide alerts up here, this bell icon, these alerts are viewable right from our appliance dashboard, as well as being able to uh, be configured out, to be emailed to the administrators of your choosing. We've got our key tabs for our functionality within our backup environment over here on the left, and a great viewer summary of our backups uh, here on the dashboard, the assets in your environment that we are protecting, that we're not protecting, and an asset is a <clears throat> 
And an asset is any physical server, virtual machine, NAS-based storage object, or application uh, itself, things like Exchange, SQL, uh, where there's specific data that may need to be protected more granularly, uh, granularly with an application agent. Uh, we have compatibility for over 250 applications, operating systems, and hypervisors uh, within our compatibility. So, it was a great, um, as Dick had mentioned, you know, a great way when you look at that breadth of that offering to be able to protect one's entire environment with a single, uh, with a single backup solution or a single point, uh, point product on premise. We also have a summary on our dashboard here of our recoveries, replication offsite, and this here, recovery assurance. These are the results of, as Dick had mentioned, that automated sandbox recovery testing, and it's critically important. Not only are we testing for recovery point and recovery time objectives, but again, we're testing or executing application level scripts to ensure that the underlying data has been backed up. We've seen instances, and you can certainly have backup files that are completed, but a particular instance or table within a SQL database has been corrupted. The entire DB is then rendered unrecoverable. We want to proactively help our users get in front of potential issues when it comes to Recovery and what I love about recovery assurance is that it's a feature that was really born of feedback from our community. Unitrends offers a white glove disaster recovery as a service with our uh, manufacturer's cloud environment, and we ran similar testing, defining things like boot order, networking dependencies, uh, the application level tests for our customers, and reported on them regularly based on the enrollment level that they were in as a part of that service. They were getting those reports on a weekly or a monthly basis. They said, Unitrends, this is fantastic information. We would love the ability to be able to do this locally. And so we built it in last year with our 10.0 release. It's a function of one of our jobs. And let me just make sure that my connections are good here. I saw a little bit of lag, so I'm just going to come back in. But it's a function of one of our jobs. We built it in locally for our users and it's what we call data copy access. We're going to be executing these tests against backup files that have already been created. So from our jobs tab here within our jobs manager, you'll come down and scroll in to create a data copy access job. And from here, we'll be browsing through our inventory and determine what assets it is that we want to test. So from our inventory here, this is our local source appliance, our lab appliance here, and we're going to come into our backups tab. We've got a number of virtual machine backups or snapshots that have been taken here. And from this inventory, we're going to be testing a SQL machine that actually backends into this web server here. And critically important to make sure that uh, devices and applications can authenticate and communicate Active Directory here as well. So we've got three machines that will be a part of this particular test, Active Directory, a web server, and then our SQL server that backends into our web server here. When you set up the data copy access job, you will build out a lab profile in which you'll designate a custom name up at the top here for your testing. And then because we're testing VMware uh, backups or VMware snapshots, we're going to be testing or targeting uh, one of our VMware hosts. We'll select the target host, uh, resource pools, where configured, the data store here, and then recovery and test network. The data copy access job, in addition to be able to run this testing and report on it, can also be used to spin up an isolated lab environment in which you can run uh, patch testing, DevOps, QA testing, and so forth, but it can also be used for push button failover. So as we're designating recovery, we're covering these VMs live, we want that to be to our VM network, the virtual network here. All of our testing will be contained within this isolated sandbox network that we've stood up and we'll be using our local ETH0 appliance. You will also put for compliance purposes recovery point and recovery time objectives in intervals of hours or minutes. But you can establish or create as many profiles as necessary or customized to your needs or the particular assets that you are testing. If you've got a mix of hypervisor types or uh, what not, we review our target location here, host, data store, recovery network, testing network. We'll come over and you'll create the schedule. Uh, very straightforward scheduling tool here. You just toggle on and off the days of the week in which you want this testing to run, determine its start time and its recurrence. Lastly, here's where uh, 
the magic happens, so to speak, and, and where we're taking you beyond that screenshot verification. It's one thing to boot that machine up. It's another to really log in and certify a specific service. Um, but a lot of <clears throat> these dependencies, as Dick has talked about, are, are dependencies in Restore in terms of things like boot order, the interconnectivity between these machines. It can be precarious. So the recovery testing within our environment here is fully customizable. First up, we'll schedule out the testing for our Active Directory server. And here we have the name of our recovery, boot order. We'll keep this, bring this up first. You can reconfigure the CPU and the memory of these virtual machines, adjust credentials, re-IP the machines. And over here, <clears throat> excuse me, is where we figure out or schedule our application level tests. There are over 50 application level and services scripts that have already been preloaded here. You can also run your own custom scripting through the use of PowerShell tools, scan drives and folders for malware, or again, leverage one of the tests that we've already provided here. In the case of our AD server here, we're going to test our domain service, make sure that the domain is on. We can authenticate our users and authorize our traffic here. So we're going to save out that test. Secondly, we'll configure our web server. We're going to put this into our second boot group. We'll have it come up after Active Directory, and we'll come over and configure a couple of tests for this web machine as well. The first test that we're going to schedule is IIS, make sure that our publishing service is responding. We're able to post our website. And secondly, we're gonna run a quick ping test here to make sure that it can communicate with its backend database that's also gonna be spun up here, our Burlab SQL machine. So we've added in a couple of hosts for our web service. And lastly, we'll configure the SQL server. We're also going to put this into our second boot group, have it come up in concert with the web server after Active Directory. And we'll add in a couple of tests as well for our SQL machine. The first, you can run uh, queries here with expected outputs. We're going to check the entire status of our WebDB service. So we're going to check and certify a particular instance <clears throat> within the SQL machine, and we're also going to run a test and make sure that the database engine, our MS SQL Server service, is on and responding. So a couple of tests that we've added in here, and we've finished here. Do you see how straightforward and, and simplistic we've strived to make this for our users? In a lot of cases, uh, when they're not able to test as frequently as they know that they should or, or as they would like to be, there are limitations from a manpower or a budgetary standpoint, or hey, we just don't have the bandwidth to drive four hours to our recovery site. Uh, with Unitrends, we've built it in for you into the local product, automated it for you. You set it up and uh, schedule it, and it runs from there. And again, this job enables more than just the recovery testing. You can run that testing on demand. Again, spin up an isolated lab environment for patch testing, uh, QA testing, DevOps, or even push button failure in the event of a larger local outage or an error with those machines. But proof and confidence is something that we're very uh, big on at Unitrends. We think that given the nature of recoveries, it's absolutely critically important. The results of data copy access testing, you'll see in a couple of different places here from within our reports uh, reporting. I, I do like to mention that the reporting is all uh, self-contained within the appliance as well. Uh, there's no additional licensing. You don't need to bring your own SQL database and stand it up on a secondary host. It's all self-contained to the Unitrends appliance, truly that all-in-one solution. The first result here is our compliance report, and these are easily exportable into a PDF or a CSV file, and they're going to benchmark from our tests the results of our recovery point and our recovery time actuals. Our profile is set, a goal RTO and RPO here. We're certainly able to meet our RTO, bringing our machines up between five and six minutes, well within that 30 minute per threshold. And our recovery point actuals, well within that 24 hour threshold for data loss with our last clean tested backups, having been taken anywhere from about seven to uh, nine and a half hours ago. So again, these are easily exportable, hand them to a business, uh, business owner, manager, director, compliance officer, whoever it might be that would benefit from that information. And we see the results of the application level scripts here from our recovery assurance report. Also exportable into a PDF or a CSV file. I'm going to show you a successful report first, but we do have a failure in here, and I think the failures are, are equally as illuminating. 
But as the result of this successful test here, we're leveraging our instant recovery process, which is how Unitrends for Windows, VMware, and Hyper-V assets helps our customers achieve a near zero RTO by leveraging the appliance as a temporary data store. Here are our three machines. We've started that instant recovery process for our web, SQL, and Active Directory assets here. We've reconfigured them as specified. We power them on in the first of our boot groups here is that AD server and we've executed that NTDS script, testing the domain service it is on and is responding. Secondly, we've brought up our SQL and our web machines here, certified that instance status and tested that database engine service, both successful, as well as testing and certifying IIS and ensuring that our web uh, host here can communicate with <clears throat> its SQL database on the back end here. Once the tests have been executed and successful or uh, successes or failures are notated, we'll power off the virtual machines, remove them, tear down the instant recovery process, and update both our compliance and our recovery assurance reports. But when we talk about being able to be proactive to, uh, to potential failures, we also have the results of a failed test here. Uh, we've been notified in red here, error messages have been lit up under the description. What happened here was we had <clears throat> an instant recovery session of this AD server already running and it hadn't been torn down. So we couldn't even create the image for this server where there may be conflicting uh, IPs, conflicting VMs on the network here. Again, we can be proactive and understand that because we can't even boot this AD server, we're not going to be successful in powering on this machine. So we can identify proactively potential issues or um, impacts that there may be to our recovery. And of course, as always, uh, Unitrend support is available to you 24 by 7 by 365 right from within your appliance help menu. You can reference our online chat help here, our community forum, including our knowledge base articles, deep, deep documentation about the Unitrend uh, systems here. You can even open up a secure VPN tunnel right from our support center to your appliance and have an engineer come in and review those error logs or those tests with you. But I absolutely love uh, Recovery Assurance. It's one of our customers' uh, favorite features. They, again, were really prompting us as we were performing this testing as a part of our cloud services to build it into the local product. So now I'm hopeful that all of our customers have this Recovery Assurance tile front and center on their dashboards as I do as well. So as always, we can see clearly the results of both compliance and application tests drill right down into those reports from our dashboard where we need to perform those diagnostics or capture more information. Uh, Dick, I would like to, at this point here, um, pass things back over to you for um, the conclusion here of our presentation. So I'm just going to be passing the ball back here. Uh, and if you could share out, I think we just had a couple, uh, a couple of slides remaining here. That's right, thank you, Adam. Uh, so, um, so um, uh, one thing I wanted to say about Adam's uh, presentation, which was really great, um, was that you can also do some software upgrade testing. Uh, one of the ways uh, that causes downtime, uh, it's quite common, is, is that a new version of software comes in, uh, it gets installed, and it causes some compatibility issues. Uh, you can actually test that software inside of our sandboxes. Uh, so that you know in advance that when you put it in your production environment, um, it will be good. So at this point, I'd like to take uh, one final poll, uh, basically to ask you, uh, you know, if you need more information. Adam's presentation was very good, very complete, uh, but you know, it's uh, it's just a quick poll of a lot of technology, uh, and we'd really like to understand uh, what else you might need. So Adam, if you would fire up that uh, poll. Um, and then we'll leave that open for a little bit. And um, I think at that point we will uh, take any questions that we might have from the audience. Excellent. I'll, I'll leave that open for a moment. I do see folks that are, that are submitting responses, so we'll give you some, some time on that one. Absolutely, Dick. Let's take a look at the, at the Q&A here. Um, I know there are a couple of folks that are asking questions for uh, the URLs and the recordings. That will be <clears throat> uh, absolutely. Um, made available to folks. Uh, there was a question, let me just find it here, a little bit early on, earlier on here. Bear with me just one second here. While I locate this here. So, okay. 
So, Sean, Dick, this might be a good question for you because I know it, it came in right as you were wrapping up um, the portion on SaaS backup. And Sean is wondering, uh, what if vendors are, uh, what if they, as in the, the, the SaaS provider, uh, are res or what if they are responsible to do the backups? Would the data be protected in the same way, I would assume, as the spanning product does, or would it be recoverable? Uh, so they do uh, wholesale backups uh, so that they can protect against, you know, they have one of their servers go down or they have a network issue. Um, they're not protecting data at the user level. Uh, and they're certainly not letting users go back into their archives. Um, they don't keep copies, uh, old copies. They don't keep archive data. So uh, their backups are really just for immediate recovery uh, and not for any archiving, of, of, and particularly not at the end user level. Excellent. I, I think that it's I think that it's always a, a, a best practice uh, to clearly review with any service providers uh, what their uh, SLAs include in terms of what they guarantee as far as um, things like data protection or SLAs from a retention or a uh, recovery time objective uh, standpoint. There was a question from Christopher, uh, I'm assuming came in, looks like it came in during um, some of our recovery assurance testing. Is this isolated from the network during testing? Um, so Christopher, yes, when you're configuring out the lab profile for uh, the data copy access jobs, we did configure uh, a private or an isolated network. There are also some other settings within the Unitrend systems when we're leveraging instant recovery or creating uh, replicas, which are standby copies of Windows or VMware machines. Uh, you can spin those up in audit mode. In effect, they will have no NICs, no network connectivity. They're spun up actually on uh, the Unitrend's appliance itself, and that you can also use that audit mode uh, to test the viability of recovery, spin up an isolated copy of a machine for something like a quick patch or an update test, uh, but a couple of different ways within the interface to uh, bring up copies from the production data that we've backed up that are isolated from the production environment. All right, um, a question from Robbie. Uh, is data copy access a separately licensed feature? Is it available with cloud service or on-premise devices as well? Uh, so, Robbie, data copy access um, is a part of our Enterprise Plus licensing. It's included with every Enterprise Plus edition of our software or Enterprise Plus edition uh, recovery series appliance that goes out. Uh, the recovery assurance testing is also a part of our disaster recovery as a service. Uh, so there are two uh, cloud use cases for the Unitrends cloud. The first is long-term retention of your data. We store backup copies on a GFS rotation based on a certain data volume and, <clears throat> and retention period. The second is that white glove spin up. Uh, with the premium and elite levels of uh, the disaster recovery as a service, uh, the recovery assurance testing is performed either weekly or monthly. Uh, respectively. So you can use it both on-premise and with our um, DR as a cloud service. Uh, there's a question from Christopher as well. Uh, does Hyper-V have the same options as VMware? Um, and Christopher, for uh, the most part, uh, yes, you can use data copy access to test Hyper-V uh, backups. <clears throat> You can also use things like instant recovery for Hyper-V. Now, we do have support for Hyper-V 2019, um, but Hyper-V replicas, I know, is something that is coming very, very soon. So it's not going to be quite one-to-one. -one. We're still a little bit further along with VMware, but uh, very, very shortly, some of that Hyper-V functionality will be catching, uh, will be caught up. Uh, there is a question with Lori, will this work well with Nutanix? Um, Dick, is that one that you would like to, to touch on? Sure. Uh, we uh, have worked very hard with Nutanix um, to certify our backup and recovery capabilities. And so uh, we also uh, natively protect uh, the Nutanix hypervisor. Uh, its name escapes me at the moment, Adam, if you remember it. Um, uh, AHV or Acropolis. AHV, that's it, Acropolis. AHV, they prefer AHV. So we can natively protect AHV. 
uh, hypervisors, and so uh, and that's a free hypervisor that's provided by Nutanix. Um, we have a, a major booth coming at the Nutanix uh, trade show that I believe it's in uh, Europe this uh, next week. So uh, we, you can go to the Nutanix page and see that we're certified for that. You can also go to our page and read about the capabilities there as well. Excellent, excellent, thank you. Um, so I think that <clears throat> that was the bulk of, uh, of what we have here. There are a couple of, um, again, a couple of folks that are requesting um, links, URLs. We'll make sure that we save all of this um, and be sending it out to folks. Um, Dick, any closing remarks here? And again, thank you for everyone that submitted uh, poll responses. We'll be sure to get uh, that additional information over uh, over your uh, over your way as requested. Yeah, thanks, Adam. I just wanted to call attention that this this webcast is part of a, a uh, campaign that we're running now to educate the marketplace about uh, recovery failures. Uh, we have created a checklist uh, that includes these. Uh, these topics as well as many others. Uh, you can get it on our website, it's there now. Uh, we have uh, some white papers and uh, we'll have uh, some blogs all uh, talking about uh, preventing recovery failures. So those resources are available to you as well. Um, if you like the demo that Adam did uh, and would like to share it with others in your organization, you can request a, a personal demo, a live demo, uh, by going to this, web, this uh, URL on our website and you can talk to one of our continuity experts uh, if you have a particular use case or a particular set of assets that uh, you want to understand um, how we could protect. So um, again, all of this is on our website, and I direct you there and uh, call your attention to it. Excellent. Thank you so much, Dick. And uh, for everyone else, for any um, chats that we didn't have time to uh, get to here, we'll be following up with folks offline. Uh, but I think that this is a great place to conclude. So I'll leave these uh, links up here for everyone for uh, just another moment if you'd like to capture those. But again, a recording will be available as well. So we wanted to thank everyone again for joining us today. Uh, follow unitrends.com backslash events for the upcoming uh, webinars as we continue to explore uh, the reasons that recoveries fail. My name is Adam Margett. I'm a technical specialist here with Unitrends. And I do want to thank again Dick Sapler, our Senior Product Marketing Manager, for joining us for today's presentation. Thank you all again, everyone, and have a great rest of your day. Take care.